Hi, I'm Vanessa from speakenglishwithvanessa.com and today I have a very special guest. Let's see. Are you ready to meet my very special guest? Today you're going to meet Anna from English Like a Native and Anna is from the UK. So today you will be seeing my kitchen and Anna's kitchen, American kitchen versus British kitchen. <laughs> We're going to be talking about some vocabulary differences, some cultural differences, and I hope that our chit chat will help you to expand your vocabulary and have a fun time. Thank you so much, Anna, for joining me. Oh, hi, Vanessa. Thank you for having me on the channel. Thanks so much. Well, I want to let our students know before we start with our tours that, like always, I have created a free PDF worksheet with all of today's vocabulary, pronunciation tips, cultural tips, anything that comes up along the way. So you can download that free PDF with the link in the description. All right, let's get started by watching the tour of my American kitchen. And then after that, we'll take a look at your kitchen, Anna. Let's watch the tour of my kitchen. Welcome to my American kitchen. Today, I'd like to give you a mini tour around the kitchen, and I'm curious, what's different from your country? We all probably have a place to cook, <laughs> but I'm sure that it looks different all around the world. So let's get started by taking a look at the place where we keep our food, the fridge. Fridges in the US kind of have a stereotype of being huge, and it's true. <laughs> this is our fridge. It is very big, and it's great for keeping lots of food. Because I have kids, the fridge is covered in memorabilia things from our children, pictures. Underneath the fridge is the freezer, which you can't really see, but it is also very big. It's great for keeping lots of things. Every and two weeks or every three weeks, I buy a lot of food. So I guess this is different depending on the size of your fridge. <laughs> Beside the fridge is the oven or the stove. So here's the stove top and underneath here is the oven, but it's pretty typical in the US to have either an electric stove top like I have or a gas stove top that has a little flame and it cooks. This is what I have. There's knobs for turning it on. And over here are some other little appliances like our toaster. We have a four slice toaster. There are four people in our family, so this is very convenient. And uh, let me take you over to this side to take a look at where we wash the dishes. So fun. <laughs> Before we get to the sink, I have my electric tea kettle. I'd say that having an electric tea kettle is pretty common in most homes in the US. Over here is my sink. So this is a really typical sink in the US. It has two basins. These are the sink basins. And there is hot and cold water that come out. We also have a little drinking water spigot right here. This is common, but it's not always filtered. It's often just cold. It might be filtered a little bit more than your usual tap water. That water isn't that great to me. Instead, really excellently filtered water tastes so good. Uh, we also have a spray nozzle. This is also really typical in the US. Right now, it won't spray anything because I haven't turned on the water in the sink. But if I turn on the water in the sink, I can spray. On this side is my husband's coffee supplies and our countertop where we do most of our food preparation. And a cutting board. I have a little thing for compost. It's quite full right now, actually. I need to take it outside. But whenever we have food scraps or things like that, I can put them in that little compost container because we don't have a disposal, which is pretty common in the US, especially in modern houses. But my house is from the late 1960s. One thing that you might notice I don't have in here, and that is laundry. We have a separate laundry room. It's actually just like a big closet that has a washer and a dryer in it. You will never see a washer and a dryer visible in the kitchen. It's possible that it might be in a closet behind doors that you can't see, like a little laundry closet. These rooms are always separate, and that's just how it is. <laughs> uh, there's one more appliance I'd like to show you, but I'm gonna need to bring you down here to show you. In almost every kitchen in the US, you will find 
a lovely dishwasher. Oh, I love the dishwasher so much and I feel so grateful for this, but it's very typical in the US. I think you would be very hard pressed to find a house in the US that does not have a dishwasher. Beside the dishwasher is our trash can and we have a recycling bin out of view. Uh, in the US, most places, most cities offer recycling, but usually you just throw all of your recycling in one bin and you don't need to sort it. So you don't need to sort glass and paper. I know some countries you have to sort colors of glass. There's a really strict process. I'm curious, is your kitchen different than mine? Let me know. All right, well, that was my American kitchen. Now let's take a look at Anna's British kitchen. Let's see if there's any differences or any similarities. And I want you to be thinking about your kitchen too and comparing it with what we're showing you. All right, let's watch that and then we'll have a little chit chat about it. Hello, hello. Here we are today in my kitchen. So let me show you around. It's quite a large kitchen for a house in the UK. Many of our kitchens are quite small and we have uh, this little island. Now, you don't always have space to have an island here in the UK. We tend to cook here on the hob and we tend to eat at the island regularly. We eat here, snack here. So above our hob, we have our hood and we can turn on the lights or turn on the extractor fan. It's very noisy. And I've got a very messy uh, herb shelf here, a little herb rack. Now behind here, we have our plug sockets and the main switch, a main power switch to turn off the power to the hob as well as the power to the hood here. And then there's pots and pans in those drawers. We have a blackboard that we sometimes use to write lists or let the children draw on. Now this inbuilt cupboard here is actually our fridge. It's a big fridge, as you see. We have filled it and we have our freezer actually in the garage, which is through there. We're lucky to have that extra space there and we keep our washer, dryer and freezer in there. Normally that stuff would also be in the kitchen. And then moving around, we have more cupboards and our microwave, which is built in up here. And we've got our oven. It's a mess in there, don't, don't look in the oven. And then these cupboards here aren't actually cupboards. This one houses our dishwasher and this one here just below the sink is our recycling drawer. The appliances we have out are an air fryer which we cook a lot of chips and maybe chicken goujons things like that. Our toaster then we have our electric kettle with all our tea supplies and we actually have a soda stream. And then moving around here, we have our sink. We tend to have a loose basin that we can fill, have on the side, wash up, and then pour away any excess juices and water down the sink here. And we actually have a mixer tap and our draining board. Obviously, I've been doing some washing up this morning. And then on the side here, we just have a compost bin for our waste food. And then our main bin is here. And then we have one more appliance out at all times, which is our coffee machine. Very, very important. And then in the lower drawers, it's a mixture of things that we need on a daily basis. That is my kitchen. Well, thank you so much, Anna, for showing us your kitchen. There are a lot of similarities, but a lot of very interesting differences that I thought we could talk about. Yeah, there were quite a few that surprised me actually, mm -hmm. but I know some common differences, but there were so many things that I was like, wow, I did not know that. Yes. And especially to have you explain it with the vocabulary you would use. I think one of the first things that stood out to me was when you were describing the area where you would put a pot or a pan, you said, the hob. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew something about British English, but I've never heard that term before. Really? Is that pretty common? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you called it a stove top. Yeah, it could be the stove or the stove top. Yeah. So I think, I think we do use stove, but I think for us, the stove could refer to the entire kind of 
cooker with hob but that section at the top ours is separate from our actual mm. oven so that section on the top is the hob okay. so even if it's on top of a cooker or a stove that's the hob and mm. you either have a gas hob or an electric hob and I had an induction hob Oh, okay. And is it common that it's separate like that? Or is it usually together and yours is different? I think it just depends on the layout of the kitchen. I, uh -huh. In the past, it wasn't common. But now with new technology and fancy designs, it's becoming more common. Uh, and you called it a cooker underneath. I would call that an oven, but you called it a cooker. Yeah. So I think for us, the unit that is you know, the entire grill, the oven mm. and the hob in one, that is a cooker. We would call, we'd actually call the bit that you bake in and cook in, we'd call that the oven. Oh, I don't think I would use the word cooker. The only time I might use that is if I said a slow cooker. Um, right. Do you use those? It's like the separate device that you can plug in and cook yeah, we, overnight or something. on top of our cupboard. Um, we actually oh, used to have yeah. two because we like to make big stews. But did you notice any other differences as you were watching this video? Yeah, so above your stove top, yes. <laughs> you didn't have an extractor fan or it didn't seem like you did. Ah, so yes. what do you do when you're... I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming you never burn anything because you seem to be a whiz in the kitchen. But sometimes things are very steamy or a little bit smoky. Like, what do you do with all the steam and stuff? The microwave almost always in American kitchens is placed above the stove. And there's a little button on the microwave you can push. And it's for a fan because underneath the microwave, there's a little fan. But right. I don't think it goes anywhere. I could be wrong, but <laughs> it's certainly not as intense as yours is. One thing that came up for me was I was surprised to see that you actually had a kettle in your kitchen yeah. because I thought that it wasn't very common in America to mm. have a kettle. I thought you guys just had your coffee in your coffee pots. But you have a kettle and you called it a tea kettle. Yes, it's almost always called called a tea kettle maybe because we only use it for tea you also had a very interesting sink yes your sink was much different than mine what did you mm -hmm. notice that was striking to you about mine compared to yours so you have two sinks which I think seems like a bit of a blessing really especially when you've got a family yeah. um we we have this plastic bowl in our sink oh, um yes, but actually right. if we had two sinks I think I'd probably work a bit differently when I'm washing up how do you use those sinks? What do you do? Well, first of all, I don't wash up. <laughs> this is a very British English phrasal verb. I love it. I think the first time that I heard wash up, I'm not sure why, but it just struck me as being so cute. <laughs> I'm not sure why cute was the word that came to mind. We would say I wash the dishes or it's time to do the dishes. I have to do the dishes. I would never say it's time to wash up or I need to wash up, I would just use that full expression, wash my hands, wash the dishes. But I think a lot of Americans use the double sink basin for rinsing the dishes and then for putting really dirty dishes in, or they use it for two different purposes. But for us, I've never really found that to be the cleanest way to do dishes. But I think that's what a lot of people do is they'll fill up or they'll soak the dishes on one side and then they'll just set them on the other side. But yeah. that's a common way I to use it. I think there's a, a common belief that in the UK, we don't wash our dishes very well. Because I remember doing a little short video about washing up once and people oh. were like shocked that we rinse the soap suds off afterwards, like the British don't do that. That's a funny stereotype that <laughs> you, you're you just going to eat with the soap suds still dried onto the plates. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some people do do that, but I it's not, it's not what I do or people I know do. So you um, would wash and rinse the dishes and then, or like lightly rinse them, I guess, and wash them and then put them in the dishwasher. Yeah, normally I put a nice big hot bowl of soapy water and then mm -hmm. I'll rinse the dish before I put it in if it's gloopy and nasty so that I'm not mm -hmm. dirtying the water mm -hmm. too much and then wash the dish rinse the dish mm -hmm. or the whatever it is and then put it on the drainer um but yeah I've never really understood washing dishes before put them, putting them in the dishwasher unless mm -hmm. they're absolutely caked in yeah. like egg or something that's sticky and hard for the dishwasher to break down what did you call that thing that you dry the dishes in a drainer a drainer. Oh, okay. I would call that a drying rack. I have a little one beside our sink, but it's just one of those kinds with the pins that come up and you put bottles in it. Mm -hmm. And we don't 
use bottles, but for some reason that's the one that's stuck because we don't really hand wash many dishes. So it's just a tiny thing. Um, we've just changed our tap because we normally, we, we have these separate taps, which is oh. quite common in the UK. And I know other people find that surprising. But this comes down to our very old plumbing system in the UK. Mm. Um, it was necessary for hygiene, I think, to have separate taps. But now as things are improving, uh, we're able to use mixer taps more often. And so we installed a mixer tap and our mixer tap is very special because you can have it squirt uh, like spray or just just oh, the normal. Oh, it's got like a button and you can choose the amount of water that comes out. Yeah, yeah. But you've got one that's separate. I thought that was quite fancy. Yeah. So we have hot and cold water nozzle. It comes out of the faucet or the spigot. <laughs> uh, I like how you called that a mixer tap. When I first heard you say that, it sounded like something with alcohol, like a mixed drink. So you you just call that a faucet? Yeah, it would be a faucet. I think I might have used the word spigot too, a spigot uh -huh. or a faucet. You, you that little water spout thing that you had going on. Oh, yes. And that's the spray nozzle. And that's just for washing out the sink. Right. So that's pretty common in the US though. And I think it's pretty handy. Remembering how you went around your kitchen. I'm now remembering you talked about having your cutting board. Yes. That's on your lovely wood inside. Yes. I found that fascinating because we, we don't call it a cutting board, although that's very practical. That's what it's for. We call it a chopping board. For chopping. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we use the verb to chop for actually what you do. I need to chop some carrots, but it's always a cutting board in the US. Cutting board. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about your refrigerator and your dishwasher too, because they are so smoothly hidden into the cupboards that you wouldn't even notice that they're there. I haven't ever seen that in the US. It looks so nice. I love that aesthetic. I think we call it integrated. So I think okay. you might say it's an integrated dishwasher because it's oh. integrated into the kitchen unit. Yeah. Dishwashers, it's very common for them to be integrated. Mm. Fridges, not so much. It's really handy. It makes the kitchen look nice. Yeah. And um, the only problem is I can't do that lovely thing that you've done with your fridge, which is to have all the magnets and all the things <laughs> on the front of the fridge because it's just a wooden door. Oh, it's, it's not metal. It's not magnetized. <laughs> no. I wanted to ask you about the refrigerator as well, because mm -hmm. we do use refrigerator, but more often than not, we just say fridge. Do you always say refrigerator? Uh, no, we say both. I think I did just say refrigerator, the full word, but yeah. fridge is great. Yes, absolutely. And that's what I often tell my students too, is just easy fridge. Yeah. <laughs> nice and quick and short. Um, there was one thing I wanted to mention about your coffee maker. It uh -huh. said, I think it said espresso on the top. Does it make espresso? Espresso, just an espresso drink? It's the brand. So the brand okay. is Nespresso coffee and okay. they provide their own brand of coffee beans, and little pods. So you don't have, you don't have Nespresso in, in the States? If it makes espresso, like the little concentrated, <laughs> what I would think is concentrated coffee is not super common in the US. If you have an espresso machine in your house, it's very fancy. That's right. high level. Usually you just have mm -hmm. a big coffee pot to see that your only item makes espresso might be a little bit mm, shocking for Americans visiting a house or staying somewhere in the UK. And that's their only option for coffee. It doesn't just do espressos. It does all, it would make an Americano if that's what you wanted, but it doesn't do a big pot. Was there anything else you wanted to mention about the kitchen before I tell them about our other video that we made together? Yeah, there were a couple of things. Oh, so you yeah. don't have a waste disposal unit, but it's really common in America, isn't it? Yes. In the UK, it really isn't. But all I know about waste disposal units is what I know from horror films. It's like <laughs> no. someone gets caught in the waste disposal unit in the film. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a disposal. We call it a disposal. Right, the disposal okay. is pretty common to have. We have a compost bin, which is almost identical to yours. I saw that. It looks so similar. The only difference is that um, you call the waste food mm -hmm. scraps. Yeah, scraps of food, like ends of carrots and the seeds in the middle of a pepper, that scraps. Yeah, so I think we just call it food waste. I, the scraps is something I'd give to the dog. Give <laughs> the dog some scraps, which are just some like last little bit leftover bits of meat or uh -huh. whatever. So it's the same sort of, it refers to the same thing. But when I'm putting food into the compost bin, I just call it food waste. In the US, it's not very common to have a compost bin. The only reason we have that is because we have a garden and we have a big 
compost pile mm -hmm. <laughs> in the back. And that way we can use it on the vegetable garden and that, those types of things. But most people would just put their food scraps in the trash or wow. down the disposal if they have a disposal. Wow. And the last thing was, uh, obviously there's a difference in vocabulary with your bin. Yours is a trash can. Mm -hmm. and we just say bin. We never say trash can. We might say, say trash when we're talking about on the computer, oh. like the little trash oh. can on the computer. But we always say a bin or a rubbish bin or a waste paper bin if it's one of those little metal ones in your oh. office. What do you um, throw into the bin? Do you throw trash into the bin? No, never. Just rubbish. Oh, so we got rubbish. You got we got bin. <laughs> we have trash and trash can. Um, and then you said you do all your recycling. Does that go it all in the trash can? Yeah, uh, there's a separate recycling. It's like a blue okay. bin, and you uh -huh. put everything in there. And you know what? A lot of places in the U.S. don't even have an option for recycling. So you just put everything glass cans anything straight in the trash which right. i think is a big shame i don't know what's it like for you we have this system where we have to prepare everything in the way that it's supposed to be prepared depending on where you live so there'll be a different system wherever whichever borough or council you come under and it's frustrating because you have to do a lot to prepare everything like all the plastic and glass has to be washed cleaned but then you hear that actually all we're doing is shipping it halfway across the world where they can't cope with our waste yeah. and they have to burn it or it ends up in the oceans and it's like well why are we bothering if yeah. if our government can't deal with it in the way it's supposed to deal with it thank you so much anna for talking about your kitchen talking oh, thank about you. my kitchen just being here on my youtube channel too thank you it's been a real pleasure an eye-opening experience i'm so glad <laughs> well if you all enjoyed this comparison video we also did one about bathrooms on Anna's channel. So I'll put a link to that in the description. It's English like a native and you can see our bathroom similarities, some shocking bathroom differences, all of these types of things and see what it is like in your country to kind of compare with what your experience is. And like always, make sure that you download the free PDF for this lesson, all of our kitchen vocabulary, kitchen cultural concepts that we talked about. And like always at the bottom of the PDF, you can answer Vanessa's challenge question so that you never forget these wonderful British and American expressions. Well, thank you so much, Anna, for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much. And we'll see you all next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. Bye.